In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of the Lord, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Thursday, the 9th of June, 2022. It is Thursday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year C. The Church celebrates the feast day of St. Ephraim, Deacon and Doctor of the Church. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon, St. Ephraim, exalted in singing of your mysteries, and from whom he received the strength to serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first book of the Kings, chapter 18, verses 41 to 46. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 65. The response to the psalm is, Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 to 26. I read from the gospel. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, shall be liable to hell fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser, while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out till you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Do not be superficial Christians. 
Do not be superficial Christians. Beloved of the Lord, one great problem of Christianity today is that Christians are very superficial. By superficiality we mean their Christianity is not deep inside of them. They may be pious. They may go to church. Our churches are always crowded on Sundays, be they Catholic, Presbyterian, or Pentecostals. They may pray. They may fast. But I tell you, it ends at these pious acts. Their piety does not push them to holiness. That explains why the very Christian who is a prayer warrior, you may be shocked that that Christian is the one championing a gossip or a quarrel at the neighborhood. That very Christian who prays and dances in church at offering time is the very one who cheats in the market. That very Christian who fasts belongs to all church groups, yet, I tell you, is the very one who keeps enemies and cannot forgive someone who hurt them. So you see, our Christianity is superficial. Jesus challenges us to make our Christianity deep. Let us not end at piety. Let us become holy. If you end at piety, then you are just at the surface level. We must go in depth. By this, Jesus means our Christianity, our pious acts must transform us. He makes a comparison between his followers and the scribes and the Pharisees. The latter were shallow, law keepers, very pious, but they were not holy. They were superficial. They prayed. They gave alms. They fasted. They read the Bible. They knew and kept the law. Yet, all this was superficial. Surface level. Just for the knowing and for the doing. It did not transform them and their worldview. Jesus needs his followers to go above this. And so he says, If your spirituality does not exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, then no, no, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the problem. Very many Christians, very many, yet our world is not changing for the better. Of what use is all the knowledge you acquire in schools if you cannot know how to relate well with people? If that knowledge cannot help you to transform society, then it is a mere and sheer waste of time. Of what use is prayer? If that prayer cannot help you to offer a kind word or greeting just to a neighbor, did you really pray? Did the prayer touch you? Were you transformed by that prayer? Were you truly in God's presence that you pray and come out of your prayer and still hate and cannot forgive? So you see, beloved of the Lord, let our Christianity not be superficial. This is what Jesus means that we should get out of superficiality. The gospel challenges us. Grow out of Christian superficiality. Do not be Christian dogs. By this we mean, taking the example of dogs, you throw water on their backs, but they don't get wet. The water slips away. We should not be superficial. Let our Christianity, let our pious acts transform us. Let us be rooted in our Christianity and let our Christianity bear fruits. What destroys the faith is this superficiality. Many Christians, very many, they flood the churches, yet they are the same in witches and wizards, turning around and destroying others. Very many, the Christians in our churches, yet they are the same, visiting soothsayers. Oh, beloved of the Lord, the gospel challenges us. Jesus tells us, let our spirituality go a step higher. Let us not end at just pious acts, 
but let our pious deeds move us to holiness. Let us pray therefore today, and Jesus gives us an example. It is not just in saying, ah, this is the person who caused trouble. We must be the first to love. We must be the first to make the move. So if you are bringing your offering to church and someone you know has a grudge against you, Jesus says, leave your gift there at the altar. Go. Be the first to love. We often hear people say, now he start him. Now he find me trouble. She is the first who started. He is the cause of the trouble, waiting that the other should come to us. Jesus tells us we should be the first. Someone you know has offended you. He did not say wait for the person to come. He says, you go. Be the first. Go and meet the person and try to sort out your differences. Dear God's good people, I always tell you, Christianity is not easy. It is not cheap, yet it is worthwhile. Till our spirituality goes far above just mere superficiality, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Ask yourself, of what use is your offering or charity if you cannot be in good terms with your brother or sister? So Jesus would rather that we reconcile with those with whom we have issues before bringing our offerings to him. Those offerings don't move him as much as a friendly and harmonious living with others. Dear good people of God, let your Christianity go deep. Let it bear fruit. Then you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Do not be like whitewashed tombs. Matthew chapter 23 verse 27. Shining from the outside, yet inside full of rotten bones. You wash the outside of cup and plate, yet inside is filled with filth. Luke chapter 11 verse 39. Do you pray, yet you still hate? Superficial Christian. Do you fast, yet you cannot greet your neighbor and hold grudges against others? Superficial Christian. Do you go to church, yet you cannot forgive? Superficial Christian. Do you receive Holy Communion, yet you still have and keep enemies? Superficial Christian. Let us pray for that grace that we may not be superficial, but that our spirituality may lead us to an inner transformation. Let people see you, see your deeds, and say indeed that you are a Christian worthy of the name. Not Christian, shining from the outside, churchgoers, but all inside full of filth. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ephraim. Born in today's Turkey in the year 306, he became a deacon of the Syrian church. He was well versed in theology and taught many people, combining contemplation with discipline and catechetical instruction. He composed many hymns, especially in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and received the title of Harp of the Holy Spirit. He died in the year 373. Through his intercession, may our spirituality, may our pious deeds, our prayers, our fastings, our going to church, may they help us to be inwardly transformed. Let our piety lead us to holiness. God needs more holy people. Beloved, let us be holy Christians, not superficial Christians. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Ephraim.